Good morning. So, we start, with, we continue with our discussion of intertextuality and cinema and today we will be focusing with um, reference to a very popular film The Matrix. Some of the key concepts that we will be discussing would be uh, simulacra and simulacrum. This is also the title of a book by philosopher Jean Baudrillard. Uh, the situation of or the condition of hyperreal or hyperreality and Plato's case and how matrix draws on all these elements. Um, so, uh, before we begin, uh, we just watched two clippings from the matrix, so we will be discussing that, but uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to a uh, still the Bonaventure Hotel, which is situated in L A. Um, if you are not familiar with this image already, uh, this is something which is discussed extensively by many of our postmodernist thinkers and also um, uh, philosophers like Baudrillard, with a specific refer reference to the city of L A. Now, why, why do you think, what, what is strikes you about this particular image? The Bonaventure Hotel in LA. Glass facade. Glass facade, okay. And what is being reflected? Cityscape. The cityscape. Okay. And the cityscape as reflected in the so there is a simulation, right? So, there is a simulation. So this is not the city which we are seeing right here, okay, but a at a, but an image of the city. You get me? Then, yeah, so, second level of simulation. Now, what happens is when you go inside the Bonaventure Hotel and you have to do some readings on your own, you will realize uh, that Bonaventure Hotel is, is a mini LA by in itself. It replicates LA. It has elevators, it has shops and those shops mimic the city shop, the cityscape. That was the idea behind constructing the hotel in such a way that it becomes a mini LA. Now, um, I am going to just read you this particular reference from uh, um, Baudrillard. And Baudrillard has done, worked extensively on American cities and how they, uh, they are created in such a way or they have become uh, so that they are, they do not, no longer appear real. They appear as if they have already been created out of image of something that already existed before. It is all, it is what matrix set tells you basically. So, Baudrillard's New York is a city of the mad set free with the energy and electric buzz of the modern city taken to another level with its speeded up non teleological activity or lack of a real goal. The city is approaching an apocalyptic state of speed, noise and over consumption with its total electric light. And I quote Baudrillard, the terrifying diversity of faces, their strangeness strained as they are all into unbelievable expressions. The masks old age of death conferred in archaic cultures are worn here by youngsters of 20 or 12, but this reflects the city as a whole. Baudrillard reads New York almost as a surrealist painting or text. His visions of clouds filling people's heads or coming out of their eyes conflates architecture and human subject. Okay. So, the idea is human beings mimic something else, what they are supposed to become, what we see in media images, we want to become that. We are no longer our real selves and that is what matrix tells us. So, we are, we have become a collage of several things. Vijay, if you remember what pastiche is all about, I would invite you today to tell us, to talk to us at least for two minutes. So, that is Bonaventure, that is the significance of the Bonaventure Hotel, it mimics everything that is outside. So, you want to see LA, just go inside Bonaventure Hotel, you do not really need to understand the city as such. Coming to matrix, Wachowski brothers and 
when they were brothers uh, made in 1999 and it is very uh, significant that a movie like this comes at the turn of the century. You know, it is very uh, interesting some of the greatest American films um, which interrogate what uh, our society is turning into, they came in the year 99 and 2000. I mean think fight club. Okay. So, setting of matrix as all of you are already familiar with, it is uh, 2099, 2099, yeah, yes, it is a uh, dark and it is a dystopic vision of society. What is dystopic as opposed to utopian? Utopian, hmm? utopian is an idealized, dystopia is a nightmare, a nightmarish city. Um, our hero as played by Keanu Reeves, he leads a double life as we already know, as a, uh, in daytime he works as a company man, he is Mr. Anderson as agent Smith often calls him. He is the only one who refers to him as Mr. Anderson throughout the film very politely, okay, great actor Hugo Weaving. And uh, his double life, his other is Neo, a computer hacker and uh, of course, we have already seen Trinity, a mysterious enigmatic a uh, woman who later on becomes his love interest and she introduces him to a zen kind of a hacker Morpheus as played by Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. So, now he uh, in the scene we have just witnessed, Neo discovers the world he previously existed, uh, uh, existed in was a computer generated virtual reality program controlled by the AI or artificial machines mankind developed years ago. And now, what is the situation today? Machines and machines have taken over the real world. Features of matrix and this these are the things that we are interested in. One is the size, the sheer volume of content that goes in. I mean, if you watch uh, the second part, some Parts just you know they, they appear as if they are set pieces. For example, uh, Monica Bellucci's part and her husband, they just they are there, the key maker. Okay, but they are there, they exist, they are trying to tell you something, but, but uh, we are going to get into the philosophy of matrix also, because it is philosophy was very important, people have written books on that, and um, not just anybody, but a philosopher, philosopher as important as, as Zizek. Are you aware of this name? Okay, watch it. There is a YouTube. Z i z e k. Selvaj Zizek. Okay, he has uh, he expresses his views on the matrix. He has also written papers on it. Okay, have you are you familiar with that? Oh, it's to cinema, he actually exactly, yes. Uh, we also get to see first or for the first time on screen bullet time, how bullets travel in extremely <coughs> slow motion cinematography. Have you watched the movie? Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, wire enhanced action. You all know, you are all familiar with what were I mean uh, before a uh, close on heels of a uh, matrix, we had a uh, crouching tiger and hidden dragon. And one of the reasons for its enormous popularity was that it, it, it duplicates the formula, the wired action, people wanted, people could not have enough of that in the matrix. So, they wanted to watch it again and it was so successful, but it all began with some uh, director who um, most of us like here and I think we had been discussing him for quite a while, John Wu, the guy who made face off, the Chinese director. Okay. So, he is extremely fond of doing wired and enhanced action. He has made a couple of great Chinese movies, all thrillers, action movies, okay, in which he employs the use of wire enhanced action and bullet time and slow motion, almost like a ballet, okay, a ballet bullet. Um, bullet ballet kind of a thing. And beautifully choreographed kung fu fight scenes. 
I mean all of you are familiar with Matrix, so I do not have to get into it, but there is a scene where uh, Morpheus trains him inside uh, almost like a Japanese kind of a uh, you know, st studio kind of a place. Okay. So, major themes human beings are reduced to almost batteries for machines and they are being fed to the machines for um, their energy. The matrix controls the creation and dissemination of ideas. Morpheus, why is he important? He directs the entire venture and he controls the uh, revolution. He is trying to restore the workers to consciousness. Workers are the real human beings and not those who are machines. Neo is repeatedly referred to as the savior. So, look at the biblio, biblical imageries and references. Even in the very first scene, when we are introduced to Neo, what does the person call him? You are my savior, you are Jesus Christ. Remember, so we have told at the beginning of the movie that look, he is a superhero in the making, although he has no attributes of being a superhero at that point. So, nature of reality in matrix and I am coming to all this to intertextuality, why we think matrix is a supreme example of intertextual cinema. So, it is ultimately impossible to tell the difference between the real and the unreal as we have just seen in the scene where Neo confronts reality. Okay. What is real? Morpheus asks you. Okay. Is it something that can be perceived by your senses, the way you touch, feel, breathe, whatever? So, that can be electrically simulated as well. So, what is real? The reality can be simulated and it can be better than the real and therefore, when you watch the movie, you will find the simulated world is much more beautiful and attractive than the real world. Okay. I mean, there, are, there have been critics of matrix, there, ha, there are lots of critics of matrix, everyone is not a fan. We enjoy the movie for a variety of reasons, because it is a great thriller, great entertainer, but then the philosophy is suspect. I mean, are we trying to tell each other here that a simulate, simulated world is more peaceful and more beautiful than the real? Because the real world is really bleak here, desert of the real. Remember, that is the term he uses. And we have come to a stage where people feel, where human beings feel that the virtual real is preferable to normal reality. So, that is the idea that is being discussed. Now, uh, French philosopher Jean Baudrillard, he gives us a term called hyper real, a situation where a kind of virtual reality is produced by models of what we want reality to be. Okay. Bonaventure Hotel, we want LA to be like this. We do not want to look at the seamier side of the city, we want the pretty, prettified city. So, we simulate LA and call the inside of Bonaventure Hotel that this is LA, this is mini LA, this is the real LA, but is it? No, it is the prettified version, the beautified version of the city. Okay. So, we want the reality to be like this and we produce certain images and we say this is real, but is it? That is the question. It is a beautiful philosophy. I mean, you read Baudrillard and you will uh, become a fan for life. A world, hyper real, is a world in which simulations or imitations of reality have become more real than reality itself. And Baudrillard then very eloquently gives examples of the Watergate scandal and Disneyland, which are exercises in duplicity cover-ups and simulations. This is matrix and you are, you have just seen Neo going through a volume of Baudry laws simulacra and simulation, but what does he use the book for? Is he reading it? No, he, it is a hideaway kind of thing. He, all his illicit gains he hides it in that one particular section of the book. So, he is used. So, that is also an interrogation of what kind of world we are living in. It is a commentary, it is a critic. Okay. He does not know that the world he 
inhabits is not real. Okay. And therefore, it is very ironic that he is reading a book like Similicra and Simulation, but he is not using the philosophy, he is just using it for something. So, you see that the comedy aspect of this, very ironic. Matrix has no comedy of course, takes itself very seriously. <laughs> okay. So, um, Baudrillard's famous essay, a very long essay, the Gulf War did not take place. He is talking about the first Gulf War, not the one which took place in the 2000s. There was another Gulf War in the year when we, most of you would have born. So, that was 1990, 1991 I think. Hmm? So, uh, it is a part in a, of Simulacra and Simulate, no it is not a part, it is that two different books sorry. So, the Gulf War did not take place. What do you understand? if you have already done something from this. Have you? What does it mean? Uh, two major books, Simulacra and Simulation and another the girl, the one which made him really famous, the Gulf War did not take place. The Gulf War took place, right? It did happen. Why does he tell us it did not take place? Any, any guesses, wild? Why go wild? You are watching Matrix, so let your imagination go wild. Maybe he is saying that the aim uh, with which America entered, like in the name of democracy, mm -hmm. uh, it did not happen. Uh, all the terrorist activities, maybe they are continuing still in the Gulf. Okay, good. It is a politics you are talking about. I am talking about uh, media created images and philosophy. Okay, tell me. Now, this was uh, the very first time that CNN was given total uh, control over filming the war as it really happened. I mean, I do remember, I watched the Gulf War taking place live as you know, we have all these mm, wonderful <laughs> reality shows. So, it took place on television 24 by 7. Okay, that means, that it is all it is they, they are choosing what to show, television tells you what to watch and that they are, they are, the, the, the US controlled media prefers certain scenes, certain situations which they want us to watch. So, the real war must have, but you know we, what we were subjected to or what we were exposed to was a very glamorous US centric version of the war. So, the Gulf War, yes, it took place, but at the same time, philosophically, it did not take place because it was all mediated through media, media saturated images, that is the idea. The Gulf War did not take place, that is a very ironic yeah, statement. So, Baudry law, ideas and ideals that Baudry law uh, professes that consumer culture has evolved from a state in which we are surrounded by representations and imitations of things that really exist towards state in which our lives are filled with simulations, objects that look as if they represent something else, but have really created the reality they seem to refer to. Think the Bonaventure Hotel again. Okay. It represents something and it makes us believe in that representation as reality, as if this really exists. Are you able to follow this line of thought? Okay. In such a situation, the world of simulation increasingly takes on a life of its own. It becomes reality. That is, I am repeating myself. We are living in our world in a media saturated world, where representation is more important than reality and it has come to a stage, where uh, we take the represented version as the real, not the real. And reality is eroded to a point that it becomes a desert. So, welcome to the desert of the real. The reality looks ugly, because representation is so beautiful. Do we agree with this? I mean, you, you have every right to contest Baudrillard. To what extent do you agree or disagree?
Well, every 20 year old woman has to look a particular part, that is what television tells you, right? Away, away, she has to look, she has to appear in a certain way. A 25 year old man should be like this, that is what a set of movies tell us. I mean, we had a, um, a great film critic recently with us in IIT, and he was talk, he gave reference to student of the year and he was talking to our class. Yeah. So, Viji knows who I am talking about. So, he was talking about the film student of the year and then he looked around and he said, I do not find anyone here who resembles those students. I mean, all of you are students, okay, but none of you resemble those boys or that girl. Why? Media tells you that a 20 year old girl is supposed to look like that, but does she? Do we have boys who are as beefed up and whatever, hunky as the boys that we watch in those movies of that genre? Okay. So, we have come to expect that certain kind of representations, whatever is their representations or simulations and we expect real life to be, as it be the way they are told to us in representations and therefore, reality has become bleak. is shown as a shot, even though they are picky while choosing its cherry picking, but still it is not romanticizing something. Yeah, it does not, yeah, yeah, but it romanticizes or it lionizes a particular society's, uh, you know, supremacy over another's. Okay, they show images of American bombers just uh, exactly. bombing a particular okay. building, it yeah. shows you that they are uh, like in control, in control. Uh, and they are fighting a just war. Okay. And it is through media images that we are told that they are fighting a just war, but is it? And that is a very contested term, okay. So, we are, it is not a class of uh, politics. And no, what we want is simulated. So, television tells us what to believe, that is the idea. They have taken certain and chosen certain images and showed them to us, and it is telling us, it is conditioning us to believe in whatever they are choosing to show us. If you read the essay, you will understand. So, representation and imitations, Agent Smith, thousands of Agent Smiths. Okay. I cannot praise this actor enough. Okay. He is one of the greatest actors of our generation, wonderful, absolutely. Yeah. So, matrix and how it draws on simulacra and simulation. So, as Morpheus introduces Neo to the real world by welcoming him into the desert of the real. Okay. And it is also a quotation from Baudrillard's simulacra and simulation. Baudrillard, by the way, died in 2007. And it is a critique of the culture that we live in, a culture that distracts us from the reality that we are being exploited, just as the machines exploit the humans in the matrix. So, the idea is that we are living in a state of consumerism, consumer culture exploits us, feeds on us the way machines feeds on human beings in the matrix. It is very interesting that there has to be a television set in the middle of the set, because it conditions the way we see the world, right. Another idea which uh, matrix is uh, fascinated with is allegory of the caves, which was first described in Plato's Republic. When Neo is freed from machines, he is uh, literally pulled from a kind of cave. We just watched the scene and he's, the, when he is cleansed and purified and his body is rid of all the me, uh, mechanical uh, stimulations. So, he 
he appears as a new born baby, appears out of as if you know he is uh, coming out of a womb, mother's womb, all swathed in blood and um, uh, fluids. Okay. Uh, uh, and it this is of it is almost akin to that his reality was just an illusion. And that is what Plato tells us that the sh shadow on the cave walls are what shadows are those? Caused by statues, okay, but those statues are also mim mimicking real people. So, twice removed from reality, there are levels of reality, and this idea. Uh, reached another level a notch above in inception. The, they are not meant to be taken literally, okay, but they are allegories of something deeper. Okay, and that is what Plato says that those who free themselves and come to perceive reality have a duty to return and teach what is real to others and that is what Morpheus does. So, Neo is the chosen one to save humanity from ignorance and acceptance of a false reality and the question that the movie raises is what is real. Very interesting scene, there is no spoon although you see the spoon, but is it real? This is the scene which takes place in or in the oracle's domestic setup, there is no spoon, there are no bullets, it is all yes, slow mo choreographed action sequence, there are no bullets. Uh, another intertextual, so uh, uh, apart from very deep philosophically, uh, philo philosophically deep ideas of Baudry law and Plato, the film also uh, draws on from popular stories and fables, sleeping beauty, bringing the beauty to conscious to a conscious state by a kiss, but where is inverted, right? e exactly beauty is uh, someone else. Okay. So, and there is a scene where he is almost dead in the first matrix and she brings him back to life with a kiss, the scene is there if you watch the movie. Reference to Alice in Wonderland, who is the writer? Lewis Carroll, Lewis Carroll, so, yeah. So, follow the white rabbit and what is that white rabbit? What does the ra rabbit do? Takes her to a wonderland, okay. So, follow the rabbit, okay, and you will realize, you will come across a new world. And his first transition uh, to the real world is by interacting with a looking glass, there is a scene through the looking glass, that is again a direct reference to Alice in Wonderland. You take the red pill and this will happen to you, you take the blue pill and something else will happen to you. So, eat this, drink this in Alice in Wonderland, okay. again the same idea. So, you have a choice which what you want to be by taking a kind of a pill. Pill is nothing but uh, a metaphor for choosing your own path. Again, intertextuality, intertextual reference. A character in Matrix says, we are not in Kansas anymore, a direct lift from Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland. How many of you have watched Wizard of Oz? Okay. Please do watch it. Now, it looks um, pretty dated, okay, I will accept, even 20 years ago when I watched the movie for the first time, it looked you know horribly dated, but uh, there are certain films, but I will tell you what, Citizen Kane in spite of uh, being shot in black and white still looks extremely dynamic, very alive, very contemporary. Okay. Therefore, Orson Welles is considered one of the greatest directors of all time. Let me tell you Orson Welles was never respected to this extent. A reputation had been revived especially by those directors who came in Hollywood during the counter culture period and during uh, the European new wave cinema. Otherwise, 
uh, Orson Welles because he was so, uh, so much of an individualist, so much of his own person that Hollywood almost wiped him out, but then his reputation was revived. So, anyway that was a digression and Wizard of Oz is another uh, influence on our film. The world of liquid pots when Nero is thoroughly clean, cleansed and washed and he has to go through various stages to various caves for purification. So, the world of liquid pots, rings of hell in Dante's divine comedy, the, the Dante's divine comedy seems to be a very popular text among filmmakers. In, in seven, we have Morgan Freeman reading through and Brad Pitt being what he is, he goes through the cliff notes and um, we are talking about Blade Runner, the image of an eye with, with very dystopic vision of the city fire and hellish images, again a reference to Dante's divine comedy. Any question, any comment, any observation here? Let us talk about matrix. I know how much you love matrix, so let us talk about it. Anything that you brings comes to your mind when you think matrix? Paleri unusually silent. Why do you like matrix, if you like? Wait, the way I can relate, hmm? it is set up of reality or it is artificial reality to consume a culture. Okay. But, um, the way it? Seen where uh, the the mole as in one agent who turns rogue, yes, like he sits in the restaurant and he says he prefers a steak and said things to the real reality. Okay. Said things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people tend to prefer artificial uh, things rather than. Okay, anything else? So, you are into philosophy of matrix. Rehan, what do you like in Matrix? Well, the same idea can actually be applied to uh, uh, people who are actually uh, not just consumer culture, mm -hmm. can be even ignorance of, uh, say, uh, from a point of view of uh, faith. Mm -hmm. I can actually say it is atheists against believers, or I can actually say it is the uh, rise of the proletariat against the capitalists. Mm -hmm. It is just a conflict of two beliefs, where uh, an entire class or an entire population is mired in one sort of belief and the other is actually, uh, the knowledge comes and the other is trying to revolt. Okay. So, a matrix actually the premise is quite progressive. I, I think that is what he is trying to tell us. It is a very progressive movie as far as its basic premise is concerned. It is a revolt of the proletariat against those who are in complete control. That is one way of looking at it. It is also, uh, you know, um, an assertion of someone who is a misfit, okay, recognition of the misfit and uh, recognition of the non-conformist in a society which demands conformity. So, this is a thread that runs through most of uh, uh, the films which uh, followed the counterculture cinema movement in Hollywood. Okay. The, the non-conform is the outsider, the misfit is the hero, Neo is the hero, okay. he is the savior. The gr group of people who are, who refuse to bow down to the machines, they are the heroes. Okay. So, it is a fight, it is an unjust and an unequal fight, but someone has to do it. Okay. So, that is the, that is the message, okay. but then it is a very contested message, but because the you brought me something to, but what about the technical aspect of it? I mean, uh, the masses which made the movie such a huge hit, it is a commercial hit. Of course, it now it has become a cult movie, but uh, among uh, in spite of its cultish status, it was a commercially phenomenally big success. Uh, why? 
stylish movie. So, it is a highly, so it did not become such a huge success because of its philosophy. Okay, definitely not because of its philosophy, because of the way it was shot. Okay. So, now we are talking about a contradiction between philosophies and between commerce. Are you able to get me Vedant? Yeah, there is a huge um, schism between what matrix is trying to tell us and what is act, it is really aiming to do. It is telling us to be non-conformist. Okay, but it conforms to all the dictates of the market. Well, John Woo's style of action, Vakshya action, wired action, it is all there. Hero solves all his problems, um, because now he is trained in Kung Fu and martial arts and he is very adept at that. And there are wonderful set pieces, therefore, I use that word set pieces, the beautifully short chase sequence, I mean it is one of the most watched film scenes you know, on the YouTube, where uh, uh, Trinity is uh, uh, on the run with uh, the key maker behind her and they are chased by, uh, yes, okay, yeah, uh, that person, okay, so um, Ma Monica Bellucci's husband, right. Okay. So, he is the one who personifies devil in the film. Okay. That is and you see it has all the tropes of a commercial movie. The chase sequences, the action sequences, the slow time bullet um, flying all over the place. Okay. That is, so all these are highly commercial elements, but with liberal doses of progressive ideas and philosophy thrown in. So, therefore, people have actually uh, critiqued the movie, because of its philosophical pretensions. The philosophy is just there as a garnishing, but it is something else. It is an out and out commercial film and therefore, we like it. We do not like it, because of its high sounding philosophy. And that we have. So, they may quote Baudrilla or they may refer to Plato, but at the bottom of it, it is a huge, huge Uh, success because of the way it was done, and the way it was marketed. Okay. So, references again to refer, uh, religions, oracles, something very popular. So, you have nice doses of uh, Zen Buddhism, even from uh, references to Hindu philosophy, especially in the third part, yeah. oracles. In part 2, in second part, uh, we have a sequence where uh, neophytes, thousands of agent smiths, they just refuse to go away. It is like biblical locusts attacking the hero from all over the place. Again, very, very direct reference to Bible. Yes, yes, so people can read into that, but also on the surface, an excellently choreographed action sequence. Uh, a direct reference to Hong Kong martial art films. Also inspired by Japanese anime movie and if you watch the film, it is called Ghosts in the Shell. I am told it, this movie also has a huge cult following, Ghost in the Shell. the dystopic version of city, the hero as a savior, the martial arts sequences, all these are referred to in ghosts in the shell. Again, so as we are talking about, we have been discussing that matrix negotiates between progressive notions of non-conformity and the rise of the proletariat against those who are in control, those who compel us to conform, but it is also a very conservatively made commercial film. And people have pointed out, Trinity begins as something else, she is her own person, okay. she is the one 
who uh, you know liberates Neo from his state of unconsciousness. And by the time we reach the third part of the film, she is just relegated to being his love interest. She has no other role to play in the movie. I am sure most of you have observed this. And uh, very fashionable, very faddish philosophical ideas and spiritual ideas, spirituality from, taken from all over the place versus martial arts. So, martial arts actually is the solution to all our problems. That is what the film tells us. Hmm? So, the song which they play, there is a song by a band called Rage Against the Machine. Okay. It is called yes. Wake Up. Yeah. So, that also, I mean the band themselves they are very non-conformist. Yeah. And the idea of using that particular song, the song itself is called Wake Up. Yes. To refer to his state of waking up into it. You know, there is a point where the movie ends. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm sure in this class everyone would be familiar with that. Is the way is the point where the movie ends, and then Neo returns to the real world, and he is the savior now, a very messianic presence. And the song that blares is a rock song, wake up. Okay, so that's the idea that he is here to wake people from their state of uh, unconsciousness. Yeah, so, they are a very non-conformist group, yes, yeah, but um, after all they have a huge following. <laughs> Absolutely commercialized aspect of, uh, of music, yes. Any other observation? Just a green pinch to whatever happens in what we call the world in which we inhabit. Yeah. And otherwise, uh, say it is very bleakish. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there are two uh, color palettes we have been talking about. about. So, uh, what kind of color palette? It acts both as spatial temporal difference, because uh, the world of, uh, the real world is somewhere else okay? and the, the machine, the virtual reality is, I mean it is 1999, okay? the real world is way ahead. Yeah, so, spatial temporal differences are brought out through the use of colors and lights. So, therefore, we call it a dystopic vision of, uh, of our uh, world, because the world in the future is going to be bleak, because we let machines run over us, all over us. I am glad you are observing these features. Akira. Akira. Yeah. 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 It also has, uh, then, uh, we can say is also heavily inspired by Akira. Yes. So, uh, Japanese anime has been a very, very strong influence on most of these science fiction films. Yeah. Please. Shweta. Princess in 1984 and Animal Farm as well. Yes. Both of them. In, from 1984, the idea of machines is controlling and acting as the conformist, the body that ensures Yes, that idea is very much there. Yes. Uh, from in the first movie, uh, actually in the first movie, the uh, awakening, the, the revolt against the machines mm -hmm. is actually one or two individuals. Yeah. From that individualist message, actually gradually transformed to the entire world of Zion. All the people are actually yeah. in the final fight. Yes. It's from individualism to uh, a mass movement. Yes. That transition. Yeah. And I think the first uh, for that. Uh, if you remember, same year we had Fight Club which also capitalizes on the same idea, an individual is starting a club, which becomes a metaphor for mobilizing a group of, yeah, so you, the other day you were talking about uh, um, discontent of masculinity. <laughs> so, <laughs> all the disgruntled men of our society, they come together and form fight clubs. Any other idea before we wind up? So, start sending your preferences to Ranjit. Okay, before we disperse, a couple of movies that you should be watching for the uh, subsequent classes. One is Up in the Air, Jason Rittman's uh, directed and George Clooney movie, Up in the Air. Watch The Godfather, please <laughs> yeah, watch The Godfather, especially the first part, but the second is also beautiful. Yeah. And then, how many of you have already, I mean, uh, I am just hazarding a guess that this is not a very popular movie among the IITs, but prove me wrong, Groundhog Day. Oh, impressive. 
watch Groundhog Day. Okay? So, see you tomorrow. Thank you.